came for the leadership seminar and this time it is parenting and uh, we have titled this series as Polishing Diamond Ruffs Polishing Diamond Ruffs We believe that children are a gift from God children are a blessing from God and they are more precious to us than diamonds, than earthly diamonds. Amen. And uh, you will agree with me, especially ladies uh, who like precious stones and all that. Your child is more precious than the stones you wear around your neck or I don't know, where all your, your work things around your ears. It is much more precious than that. So we have titled this series as Polishing Diamond Graphs. Let me tell you that uh, his speaker, before Moses spoke, Aaron would come up and speak. Aaron would speak and then Moses would speak. Aaron was the forerunner. In this series, I am Aaron. Moses is going to come. Okay. <laughs> so I am not the keynote speaker with his dolly, but I will just fill in. So that she gets her breaks and she gets, she's able to just uh, re uh, recover. Do I have uh, Joe's? We have the. Okay. Before uh, Joe's is getting ready for that. Uh, Johnny was late to school and uh, the teacher asked him, why are you late today Johnny? You know what is the school timing? And Johnny looked quite confused and she asked him again. And she asked him again, why are you late today to school? And Johnny said, I am late because mommy and daddy were fighting. Teacher looked very confused. Mommy and daddy were fighting, but why are you late to school? He said one shoe was in daddy's hand, another shoe was in mommy's hand. Now, children pick up. Children learn from their parents. And children will repeat what they see. Children are honest and they will repeat what they see. And the first topic which is what we are speaking about is role of a family. What is the role of the family? The role of the family is family provides support. We support our children. We encourage our children. We equip our children. And the child gets the maximum support from his home. If we see children uh, with broken homes, children who come from broken homes have issues with them. They do have issues. And uh, children who come from happy homes, children who come from homes where they are taken care of, they are loved, their disposition is different because it what happens in the home reflects on the child. Family provides support. Our children will experience rejection, disappointments and failures. Whether you like it or not, the world outside has, they will feel rejected sometimes. They will feel that when they are playing with, with children, some children don't like to play with them. They feel rejected. Sometimes they feel disappointed because of the grades in school or because uh, of whatever things which are there. So they could feel disappointed. And sometimes they might just feel a failure. They did not meet the expectation. They did not meet the standard. They did not meet what was required of them. And when children go through such a situation, who comes to their role? Who comes to their help? Who comes to their help? 
Hello? Talk to me. Talk to me. Parents. It will have to be parents. We cannot outsource this role to the teachers, to our, to our parents, that is their grandparents, to the uncle, to the auntie, to the, uh, to the housekeeper, to the caregiver. We cannot outsource this because we believe that children are a gift from God and we and God has given them to us to steward them. We must understand we are only stewards of our children. And at the right time and at the appropriate time, we will have to release them. Three years back, Dolly and I had to release Abigail. We had to do it. It's a part of life. It is, and if we didn't do it, there would have been problems. She would have had problems. We would have had problems. And today, so we nurtured her up and we brought her up and at the right time we had to release her. Now I am seeing that with our son Joshua. Joshua was a boy who would always run around us and hold our hand and wherever we wanted to go, he wanted to go and if he says no, you can't come, he gets very upset. Today when we go on, he said, are you coming with us? He said, I'll let you know. <laughs> Five o'clock we are going. He said, Four o'clock, Joshua, are you coming with us or not? He said, I'll let you know. Five o'clock, I do not know whether he's coming. He says, they have called you, so why should I come? I said, no, no, they have called the family. No, no, they actually want to, want to talk to you. I, I, sometimes he comes, sometimes he doesn't come. And I am seeing the, the gap which is there. As children, when school was closed, we went for our family vacation. And uh, we looked forward to that. We wanted that because both of us have very uh, stressful schedules. I am a corporate she in, uh, in school. And so whenever we had these breaks, I would ensure that I was with the family. And uh, we would go for short breaks. Now when we want to go for a holiday and this, this Diwali vacation, he's studying his MBA and final year, this vacation coming and I'm telling him, look, there is a small break, let's go out somewhere. He says, I'll let you know. And still right now, we are, we are trying to figure out actually whether we will go for a short holiday or not. So what I'm trying to say is, children are there for a season with us. After that, you will have to release them into what God has for you. Now, the family provides support. Our children will experience rejection, disappointment and failures. This is a fact of life. It is not a happy fact. It's not a happy truth. But it is a fact of life. But they should experience in their family acceptance, love and encouragement. The family, the home, they must feel accepted. They must feel loved. They must feel encouraged. Because in the world outside, there could be times and seasons. It may not be all the time. But there could be times and seasons where they feel rejected, where they feel disappointed, where they feel as a failure. Okay. So, the first role of the family is family provides support. The next role of the family is family provides a moral compass. Family provides a moral compass. What do I mean by this? Children learn from their family. They learn good behavior, bad behavior. They learn values such as thinking about others, taking responsibilities and helping around the house. Every church during the, the work, they would release children for children's ministry, right? It, it happens here. Some churches, uh, when the worship is going on, the children have their own children's ministry work with worship and the whole works. They have a separate program. 
Dolly and I are able to tell, looking at the children in Sunday school, what values they receive at home. Just looking at the children, the way they come to church, and some of them, okay, it's time for children's ministry. They all come with their bags and all, all neatly dressed and with their, with their color pencils, books, this, that, they're all ready to go. Some children make a racket. Go for the school. I won't go. Not you must go for the school. And, and that things uh, happen. Some are cranky, some are irritable. Now, and Sunday schools, some enjoy it, some don't enjoy it. Some love it, some go there because, you know, parents are said go. So, what do I do? Listen to the parents. Family provides a moral compass. And uh, children learn good behavior. That baby, I know we will say we, we send our children to school and, and it is the responsibility of the school to teach us. But you and I know today the education system. Uh, and I don't want to mention anything more because we have the principal here and uh, she, will, she will speak more about that. Teachers are interested in completing their syllabus and that is what they, they will do. But the moral responsibility, the moral training, the moral... When we were in school, there was a class called Moral Instruction Class. Now, I don't think that is there. It is called EVS and it is called what? I don't know. They, 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 they have changed it. And value education and all that stuff uh, is there. So, family, what is the first thing the family provides to the children? They provide support. The second thing is, they provide moral compass. The third thing, family is a place where children learn to relate. Children learn to relate. Children learn how to play. Children learn how to share. They learn how to forgive. Uh, they learn to apologize and they learn how to handle arguments. Children, family is a place where children learn to relate. You know, back home uh, in Thane, we have our own premises and during the week we run Alpha School. The name of our school is Alpha School and children who are two years plus they, they come to school and we can see the children. Some are very playful, joyful, they, they will learn to relate with one another and some are extremely selfish. Some, they want everything for themselves, the toys for themselves. There's one guy who comes to school and uh, there needs to be a teacher with him. Now we have around three, four teachers who are there and one teacher has to be with him. And if the teacher is not with him, he, he creates a raktas. He, he really creates, brings the whole thing down. So, so the other day I was there speaking to our school supervisor and says and asking her, what do you want to do with this child? She said, well, I just think we'll give him some more time because it's more than six months and uh, I think all the teachers have headed to the brim. They really headed to the brim. And uh, while the other children have settled down, the other children are quite happy to play. The other children, uh, they have their singing time, they are craft time, their nursery rhyme time and they have all the things all scheduled, their break time, their tuition time. This guy is a, is a law to himself. He is a law. So many a times when uh, the teachers have spoken to the parents, the, the, the father is basically someone who is continuously traveling. So he is a non-existent father. 
and the mother it's being a joint family she is basically more caught up in the household chores so this guy he is a lot to himself and it is quite evident and when we see how he relates and how he behaves goals for our family life you may ask yourself one thing what do you mean goals should a family have a goal i thought goals are meant only for careers and meant for speak to papa for for 2 3 days i didn't remember that i didn't remember that but she remember that she also said that uh, there were certain things she wanted and i said no and she kept on asking and i said no no means no as a father i said it and i forgot about it but she remembered it So then I asked her, Abigail, you remember only this, is it? Is there anything else you remember? She said, Oh no, I remember the good times we had and uh, how we used to play and we used to go out and do all those things, and I remember all that. We have already drawn the memory chart. The memory chart has already been created. But those of you who have small children at home. you are creating a memory card i tell you we have created our memory card but you are creating your memory card and children remember and things which we don't remember which we think insignificant which we think not important for them it is important and they remember and that's what they will remember us said so what memories do we have of our what goals do we set for our children when children become adults will they associate their upbringing with being listened to being prayed for being encouraged and affirmed knowing they are loved being able to talk through difficult choices will they be able to relate this to us you know when i had problems i spoke to papa and mama and they listened when i had an issue or difficulty i spoke to them i spoke to my parents and they listened or are we too busy that we don't have time now i do want to say we live very very busy schedules 
and I don't want to take that away. I don't want to belittle that. We do have stressful jobs. We, we do have stressful lifestyles. Travel and all these things are there. But in spite of all the busyness of life and the challenges of life, which we have, which we cannot avoid, which we cannot ignore, which we cannot, uh, what do you call, put aside. Do children feel that their parents listen to them? They can talk to them. Being able to talk through their difficult choices. Being encouraged and affirmed. Being valued for their uniqueness. You know, we have two children and okay, one is boy, one is a girl, so boys behave differently, girls behave differently. But what happens when there are two boys or when there are two girls? You will find both of them dif behave differently. Now many of you have got two children? One, two, three. Okay, good. You will find that they behave differently. Same home, same father, same mother, same upbringing but they are different. So, if they behave differently, we will have to also relate to them differently. It does not mean we have different standards. One, we are more lenient. One, we are very strict. It does not mean that. But we relate to them the way they, 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 they need to be related to. The other thing, I know I am speaking to believers and uh, parents who love the Lord. Will our children relate to my parents prayed for me? We had family prayer. <coughs> Whenever I had an issue, we went to them, they sat us through, they talked to us and they prayed for us. Sadly speaking, we have done this parenting quite a few times and more than parenting counseling where today they are adults, today they are going to get married and when we speak to them, what comes across is very, very difficult parenting, very, very difficult parenting. What comes across is an abusive father. What comes across is a mother who neglected them. And it is now affecting them. Now they are adults. See, our children will, more than 80% of them, behave the way we behave. What we do, they will do. Our values might not be 100% but major portion. Our values will be their values. Our, our behavior will be, their, will be their behavior. I'll never forget uh, Stanley when he was doing parenting seminar for us. Uh, this is now going back 25 plus years. He says sometimes uh, when you see your son or see your daughter, do you get irritated? And many people say, yes, sometimes when they behave, we get very, we get very irritated. He says, and that disturbs you. And we said, yes. He said, do you know they are behaving the way you were behaving when you were children? What? He said, yes. Your children carry your genes. And they are behaving. Uh, the behavior you see in them is the because they are reflecting your behavior because they have your genes and it took me some time to figure out that I said I don't understand that but I think there's some truth to that we produce what we are we produce what we are an apple will produce an apple an orange will produce an orange and we will produce what we are. You will find the traits of our children in us. Okay, some of them might have our features. Uh, my daughter looks more or less like me. And my son looks like Tony. 
Now both of them look like her. So nobody looks like me. So I'm think, thinking about what's, what's happening now. So anyway, fine. It, it happens. Those things happen. Goals for our family. Are they listened to? Are they prayed? Are they encouraged? Are they affirmed? They must know that they are loved. Even if they are naughty, even if they have disobeyed, even if you have instructed them, even if you have corrected them, it comes an underlining thing is love. The underlining thing, correction, instruction, rebuke, whatever, has to be love. It should not come out of anger. Scripture says, do not chastise your, your child in your wrath. Means, don't correct them when you are angry. Because, what will come out is not your love, is your anger. So we correct children, but the underlining thing is love and it is not anger. Okay, the last part of the series, bonding in a family. For children, love is spent time. Children understand love by time. Children need quantity time as well as quality time. The significance of the first 18 months of a child's life. The first 18 months, uh, child psychologists say, are the most crucial period of a child. And that's the, that's the time when the child is with the parents the most, especially with the mother. And the mother is training the child up, is, is feeding the child, taking care of the child. And you find a, 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 a child, a mother and child, or a parent and child bonding taking place. Now, children understand love by time. But in today's world, sorry. Can you listen? But in today's world, we uh, replace time with things. We replace time with things. Is it working? Praise God. Okay. I need to be careful with this. We replace time with things. I have seen and you have seen. We go to the other day we went to uh, a home and the child was on the tablet from the time we went to the time we left. How are you? I'm fine. What's your name? Whatever the name. How was school? Very good. So, Try to make a conversation with the child I found it difficult. The parents were inside trying to get some tea and snacks and this, that, the other. I was trying to, the fellow was sitting over there. And he was just speaking in syllables. Because he is so engrossed with his, with his, with his tablet. I have been to restaurants and you know, parents are feeding their children. And the iPhone is there and they're watching the, you know, the cartoon. And he's feeling and he's looking. And then he says, no, no, I don't want to eat anything. And they change the video and they turn another and you look at this video. And when he's looking at the video, open your watch, it goes in. I'm thinking, man, where is this all heading to? Where is this all going? And we were small, food was served. Sit on quietly and eat. Okay? If he didn't like what, what he didn't like, uh, food was served, we just stayed. Today we have all these things which are there. And uh, they are more programmed through the gadgets. A few months back, uh, we were at a mall and uh, you know, this, this merry-go-round is there. So, like the, the, the toy center for the, for the children. Or oh, it was just one place where they had this merry-go-round there. 
And there was this child on this merry-go-round sitting and the mother is running and feeding him. And he is sitting and the mother is running and feeding him. Many of us just stop and say, what in the world is happening over here? Because the fellow refused to eat and mother got a bit concerned that he is not eating. So she put him on this merry-go-round. He is very happy. The merry-go-round is going round and round and she is running and feeding him and he is eating and some of us just stopped and said, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Now, I hope it's not happening in your home. I'm sure it's not happening in your head. But if it is happening, God help you. If it is happening, all I can say, God bless you. I want to just summarize this first session for Dolly Downs. The role of a family in children. Parents play an important role. Do not abdicate that role to the teacher, to the caregiver, to, your, to the tuition teacher or to the grandparents. Everybody loves them. But the moral compass, the moral responsibility is with the parents. They are diamond roughs which God has given to you. These are diamonds which, which you have, which you need to nurture, which you, you need to take care of them. And as we progress, there are some rules. I just spoke about love, I spoke about time, I spoke about the moral compass. And as we progress during the day, there are ways how we should train up the children, how we should bring up the children. God bless. Thank you.